Good morning, everyone. It's Yvonne here, bringing to you our July 16th Mornings with Mayish. Welcome to our show. Uh, today, I have Ryan O'Neill from Curate and helping me answer your tech questions. We're gonna be talking about how to leverage tech um, to run your business better, be more efficient. Who doesn't wanna do that? So I'm very excited about today. I love tech, um, kind of ties in with marketing really well too, which, you know, that's my jam. And so it should be a good show. I'm gonna give everyone a couple of minutes to come on in and join us. Uh, so while we are doing that, be sure to say hello and let us know where you are from. Also, while we are chatting, don't hesitate to post your questions in the comments below. And if we have time, we will definitely cover them. Uh, if not, we can roll it over to new show or if it's very particular to Ryan, I can send it to him and I'm sure he'll help me answer those and put them in our show notes for you all too. Good morning, Penny. Hi, Darlene. How are you guys? So also just a reminder, I'll be posting the replay of our show over on our blog. It will be a video replay, a podcast replay, so that way you can listen and do your work and multitask, right? We're all good at multitasking. And along with the show notes, there are gonna be a lot of things that we talk about today. And so you don't need to worry about taking your own notes if you, know, you just wanna kind of pay attention and be in the moment, that's okay. We'll have those notes for you guys because there's a lot of really great things that Ryan's gonna be talking about that I know you guys are gonna wanna keep track of. Good morning, Huntress Florals. Hi, Nicola. Um, Darlene is from upstate New, New York. Welcome, guys. And I have Houston in the house. That's great. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Mayish Design Star Flower Workshop Tour. We have two more dates left, guys. We are hitting up Austin, a uh, master class we're doing over in Austin and on August 12th and 13th. Then in November, we're going to be heading over to Ohio and uh, bringing our workshop to Columbus. And that will be all levels class. So super excited. Sean is doing amazing things at that workshop, doing amazing things in the video. If you have not seen this month's video, you've got to. It's really, it's probably one of my favorite videos that we've done in a very long time. It's just really beautiful, unique, um, really great techniques and um, super, super excited. And it's, you know, promoting a couple of our amazing sponsors, Design Master and Accent Decor. So be sure to check that out. Um, I'm going to post a link to the workshops in case you are interested in that. Um, I'm also going to apologize now to, for my crazy voice. I'm a little under the weather, but I think I'll be able to make it as long as I drink a lot of water while I'm chatting with Ryan here. Uh, I also want to let you guys know, you guys are going to be one of the first to know, um, we are going to be launching our search for our 2020 Mayish Design Star starting in August. So if you guys are interested and being our next design star, make sure you start thinking about that now and getting ready. So um, this year's contest is going to be awesome. I cannot wait to see everyone that enters and we're gonna be kind of refocusing more on the videos and um, just stay tuned for more details. So that's gonna be coming up very soon. Also wanted to let you guys know, I sent out uh, an email and there was social media, but I have new David Austin brochures here, guys. They're just, they're really beautiful, um, very inspirational. They did a, an amazing job, guys, with with this. So if you want one, um, if you're a Mayish customer, we will send it with your next customer if you're a shipping customer, because we know that not everyone is, has a local Mayish and that's okay. Um, but yeah, look at this, so pretty. Um, and then also if you are, if you do have a local mash, just let your sales rep know and they can grab you one. Um, we'll have them while supplies last and, um, just super excited. So just want to let you guys know about that. Last but not least, if you are new to mash, please be sure to subscribe. So that way you are in the know of everything that we have going on. All of our new mornings with Maya shows, our guests, our events, we're opening up branches. We just opened up in San Francisco with Brandon Street. So super excited about that. If you guys don't know, um, just always a lot of really exciting things going on. So be sure you subscribe. I posted the link in the comments. So now we are going to get started. 
let me just go through here. Um, yeah, RSVP floral design. Good morning. Good morning, guys. I see Lynn Wheatley uh, from Tulsa, Lasting Impressions. And Rick, good morning, Rick, from Birmingham. Or no, Bing, Binghamton? <laughs> New York. I just totally slaughtered that, but that's okay. You'll forgive me, right? All right, so let's get started. Um, and I'm gonna kind of start all over, right? So just in case you guys are all joining me, hello, good morning. I'm Yvonne Ashton and welcome to Mornings with Mayish. Today, I have Ryan O'Neill here with me to help streamline your business by leveraging technology. Let's bring on Ryan. Good morning, Ryan, how are you? I'm great, Yvonne, how are you? Good. Welcome back to the show. It's been a minute, as we talked about, just <laughs> on, and so I love having you on the show, and I appreciate it. So thank you. Yeah, well, certainly it's a it's a great time to do it. Awesome, awesome. And so before we get into the meat of the conversation, for those of you that don't know Ryan, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Yeah. So I guess it's right about six years ago now that my wife and I decided to start a wedding and event floral company, Twisted Will of Design in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, specifically you know, focused on weddings and events and that element of the floral industry. And it was, it was a great experience starting it up, husband and wife team. Um, you know, sometimes you find some great challenges when you're working with your spouse, uh, but uh, we yeah. really enjoyed it and saw, and saw a lot of opportunity here. Um, and through that process of building up that business, uh, you know, my wife's just an incredible designer, incredible businesswoman. And through that experience, we just thought there's a lot of really repetitive tasks we had to do. We had this huge wedding folder of 17 different co physical contracts and an invoice that we printed and then a pretty proposal. And we were like, man, there's got to be a better way to streamline all of this. And through that process, uh, I started tinkering around and, and built what was uh, originally called STEM Counter. And uh, we have... Uh, we had so many florists coming to us asking us to use it that we we built it up, we uh, rebranded to curate, um, and it's been a really neat experience just connecting. So not only from the you know as as I said, I've been in that basement before, you know, putting together flower arrangements, starting something from scratch, um, and building a lifestyle business. But it's been cool seeing this other opportunity as well to be able to interact and and work with so many different florists throughout the nation and throughout the world. So that's a little bit of the, the story of, of where we came from and, and how we got to where we're at. Yeah. And I love that story because you're not just, you know, um, a tech guy that's coming into our industry. You actually have a uh, real world experience to bring to the table, to know that whatever you're building, what's new with Curate and everything is really going to help um, our, our floral designers. So I think that's great. <laughs> It's true. Actually, I say it's um, one of the most interesting parts of being married to a user of your software right. at 1130 at night when you're trying to go to bed and she's working beside you, you get like an elbow in your stomach saying, hey, hey, what's going on right now with the, with the software? And there, there's times that I have to walk it through and there's times that I'm like, oh, I guess I didn't realize we, we need to, 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 to improve there. And so right. um, I always tell all of our customers that they have a great, uh, a great advocate in my wife for the software. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's been really cool. That's great. That's great. So let's start at the beginning, Ryan. If someone really wanted to start from ground zero with setting up new systems and using different technologies, how would you suggest to start? Sure. Yeah. Great question. So the, uh, we, I always like to use the phrase, start with the end in mind. Um, mm -hmm. And basically know where, where you're going to go. There's so many people, and, and I think this is common, you know, with people that they love to do, they've got a passion for something, but maybe they're still working on the business side to, right. to be lacking particular goals, really define the goals. And so you have to know where you where you want to go. So there's, I always, I like sort of, uh, my story is, a, is an easy one to jump off of because with Twisted Willow Design, you know, we never intended for that to be some Fortune 500 company. We knew it was going to be a lifestyle business. It was going to be something small. We take like 35 events a year. You know, we've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And so there's many more events than that that happen with those two. Um, and so for us, we just, we knew, knew our limitations um, and we knew where we wanted to go with Twisted Willow Design. Um, versus Curate, which, you know, last time we talked, I think we had five employees and uh, last, last time we were on Mornings with Mayash, five full-time team members, and now we're at 16 in a year right. and we'll be yes. at 
you know, 50 to 100 within the next year and a half. And so the, it's just a completely different need set for those two different stories there. So y you need to really know, like, wh where are you going? Are you, you wanting to be at four employees and sort of keep it a lifestyle company? Are you wanting to scale this up to a point that uh, maybe you have 10 employees or 15 employees? Um, because your, your choices in technology are going to be so much different. You have I've got a friend who's a CEO in St. Louis and they own a, a software called Less Annoying CRM. And they're, they're complete, <laughs> that's literally the name. <laughs> that's their, great. <laughs> their complete focus is for small businesses who hate all these really high tech CRMs. Because, mm -hmm. because they know that there are people out there, they just want a really, really basic system and that's it. And, and so that's what they, they market to. So that's a much different plan than if, you're, if you wanna scale and you wanna be on something like HubSpot or you're dealing with a, a much wider audience. And so right. those technology decisions, I would really emphasize, uh, it depends on that, depends on how big of a team you're gonna have and how many you know, moving pieces. We did the math on it and um, we are, are at Curate at least, the number of employees we have is officially past the number of employees at the, um, at the Scranton Dunder Mifflin branch. And so there's a, um, a whole a whole bunch of relationships that are happening, and we have to, you know, we have a, a filing system in Google Docs that's built in a way to be able to handle a lot of different relationships. Whereas with Twisted Willow, we don't have a filing system like that. Um, so for us, that's been the cool thing is just being able to see um, to see where we're going at the end, and then build uh, our technology decisions and decide what software to use based on that. Very cool. Great advice, Ryan. So once initial structure is set up and everyone knows where they want to go and where they want to bring their business, what's next? Sure. Um, so that's a great question. Uh, let me let me pull this up. So um, I, I think um, after you after you sort of built the structure to find where you want to go, um, we have a really core thing that. A, a core principle that we have um, within Curate specifically is manual then automate is what we say, manual then automate. So if you've been doing something manually for a while, you're in great shape to be able to go find the software to do what you wanna do. Um, if you're just starting up, if you've just got a few events, if you've just been working for a year or two and you're wanting to try something new, I really would recommend any Anything that you do, whether that is you know stem counting, whether that is uh, receiving contracts, whether that is you know receiving orders, um, e even even if it's something as simple as you know giving instructions to to team members, you know do all of that manual, and then once you've got that figured out from a manual perspective, figure out how to automate that. So that's a a core principle, and there's some really, really complex things that that we have found that we're like, oh, we just want to automate this. And every single time, bar none, every single time that we pick a software and try to be able to improve our processes through that software, um, and just straight automate, we make a big, big mistake. And so it's it's been an experience where we have emails going out to people that don't need to be receiving emails because we're like, oh, this is smart and we automate it and we never created the rules for that. So um, that's a core, core thing for us. Look, when when you're doing what you, whatever you're, you're wanting to be able to implement technology, if you've yet to figure out a way to do it manually, definitely automate it. And so um, first, first do it and then find a way to be able to two exit, three exit, 10 exit, um, so for example, like let's say marketing, when you're trying to find brides and find clients, figure out how to do it manually, like tr wedding shows and trade shows, wed wedding shows specifically are an incredible way to do things manually and figure out what messaging works. So, right. um, one of the core things that we, we like to advocate is instead of saying contact us, we always say, check my date. And one of the greatest places that we found that that actually works was when we were talking to actual brides and grooms at wedding shows. And we found out that, hey, if I say, hey, let's schedule a consultation, nobody did it. But if we said, hey, all we kind of want to do is just to uh, you know, check your date and see whether that's available, that was really, really low touch. Nobody was super offended or worried that we were going to get their information. And they gave us all their information. And so we figured that out that worked and we were able to implement into our website. And we saw a huge increase in conversions in our website because of that. So that's a, a huge thing that we have found is, is super important. Um, figure out a way to automate it, uh, but make sure you're doing it manually first. So, you know, I, I hope that, does that answer your question a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's great. 
Um, we kind of went through the same process. Again, it's a totally different beast because we're all wholesaler and it's like a very high high volume that we have to go through, but we did everything manually, especially with like the, the incoming leads and things like that and trying to figure out what system to use, but we had a good basis for what we needed to be able right. to accomplish. But even though you know what you need to do and you do all the research on that software, it's, you know, you still learn the limitations or even like things that you didn't know that you could right. do with the software once you get into using it. I mean, I'm still like, we use HubSpot as you know, and um, I still learn things about it every single day, I feel like. So, it's, you know, <laughs> yep. and that part is just a process as well. Well, and, and that's the thing with software so many times, so many times they're adding features. So right. we find that a lot with our customers. Like I I'll, I'll, I was at AIFD uh, this last week and I was chatting with customers and one customer came up to me, she said, so I've been with you from the very beginning, but she's like, I know I need to get a refresher because I know y'all have introduced all these new tools and new right. things in the software. And as a general rule, and I think any software you, that you all use, a good softwares are gonna try to find this rule where your experience is, is never disrupted, right? Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna fail, we failed at that. But at the same time, you can still use it. You don't have to come in and all of a sudden everything's changed. And so a lot of times they build features around what you're doing. And so you have to kind of be, be intentional about right. growing and scaling that up. And so mm -hmm. um, that's this, we're the same way with HubSpot. Just the other day, Holly pulled me over and she said, hey, I'm, I'm looking at HubSpot here and I, I found something new. And I was like, oh, they introduced that, that's awesome. So you really do have to be intentional about right. not just when you first start using the software, but continually finding, okay, how can we improve this a little bit? And you have a little bit of that drive because there's so much, it, for lack of a better way to say it, there's so much wasted time that we spend as florists doing something over and over when a tool we're already using is automating the things that, that we're frustrated about. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so do you want to kind of keep on talking about continuous education? That's something that's like super important. We're touching on it a yeah. little bit now, but you know, I know you have some thoughts there and, and, and that's one of the reasons why I love what we do is because it's always changing and we're always having to learn and to evolve. I think that's just really important. I think it's sure. key to like any business, no matter if you're a marketer or a floral designer. Sure. Yeah. Great question. So um, I was, we were at International Floriculture Expo. Uh, this has been about three weeks ago in Miami. And uh, so we had these, these training sessions and really international floriculture is really for more established shops, people that have multiple locations, things like that. It, it seems like that's the, the crowd that they draw a little bit more. Uh, but there was one young lady there that was from the local college that had just started her floral, uh, floral program and she was super excited. She was like four days in her floral program. So she was coming and she was asking questions and um, and the content wasn't, you know, exactly made for, for her, but at the very same time, you know, that was one of the best experiences to be able to share with somebody who was young, who was new, who was very hungry to learn. And so she's, you know, one of the, the simplest, quickest tool, tips that I gave to her that I think is available. And I, and I think most florists know this, but I'll just, you know, reemphasize it. Is, is connect with people on social media that are, are are giving this guidance, that are giving instructionals. And so I, one of the first accounts I pointed her to was Sweet Root Village. And if you're not a follower of Sweet Root Village, you need to go over to Instagram. I, th I think it's just at Sweet Root Village. Uh, but but um, the, the ladies at Sweet Root Village, they're just incredible business women, incredible designers, and they've sort of got the whole package there. And one of my favorite things about them is that they, they have a heart for they really have a heart for teaching the industry. And that's been one of the coolest things. They're actually one of the partners in our marketplace. Um, and that's one, one of the reasons we reach out to them for that because they do have such a heart for helping other florists who are starting from, from, from scratch and building incredible companies. And so I really recommend following them. They've got tips from everything from you know, cleaning out, cleaning wax off your candles, like little hacks that they found to uh, the, one of the coolest things they did was they, um, they, they had a uh, mayhem day is what they called it, where they built this huge arrangement and then they just like had their team, all of their team were on different teams and they just flipped it onto the ground and said, all right, fix it. Like what happens? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. What happens in the moment when you got this big bomb arrangement that something happened in the van? And it, so it's it's one of those situations where they, they're creating those intentional reasons and, and 
anyone who's following an, an, an Instagram is going to be able to do that. Uh, another one of our, uh, you know, partners is, you know, the flower, Braun the Flower Guy, just a great inspirational person who's given, he's given that kind of content out that, that really is, is helping people move up to the next level. So I really would recommend find the people that you want to be like and follow them. I mean, that sounds so basic, but if, if you want to scale, you know, there's, if obviously there's different aspects of this. There's the design aspect to people that you want to be like, there's a business aspect, there's, you know, an aspiration, inspirational aspect of it, but find those people and really dive into what are they doing. Um, and, and, and that's a huge part of this is continuing, forcing yourself to re-educate yourself. Um, another thing is reaching out to this, the indus this industry more than any other has been super helpful. I mean, seriously, just straight up message yeah. somebody on Instagram in yes. internally, shoot, shoot people an email and don't feel like you're because you're new or because, or maybe I, I've had one florist who told me it's not because I'm new, it's actually because I'm old that I'm kind of nervous about asking stuff. Right. I've been around the industry for 40 years and I don't want to, you know, I don't want to impose on people. Well, you are, I mean, if there's new techniques that are coming out every single day. That's one of the great parts about the floral industry. It's not a set it and forget it industry. It's something that's continually evolving, continually finding better ways to work. So, so reach out to people. Yeah. Um, and to, to uh, add to that, um, during our keto workshop, I love Sue McCleary was there and she's, you know, a huge educator. She loves sharing her techniques and especially with the design piece of the business. And um, my favorite thing that she said, and it really struck a chord to me, and I think it's just important is that for her, sharing is a way of just putting it out there, getting it out of her head. Right. So that way she's looking for, okay, what's next? Like what's new? She's like sure. one of those trailblazers, right? Like kind of a benchmark type of person in the industry. Um, and there's plenty of those out there who just want to share. They want to put it out in the world. So that way they're just looking for the next thing. And and you don't have to be that, per that trailblazer. Right. You don't have to be that person that's like, okay, what's the next cutting edge technique um, that, you know, is going to be big in the floral industry. But you can use those different really great techniques that they're putting out there um, just because they want to share it. And there's there's a, a bunch of Sue McClary's out there, but she's definitely one that if you don't follow, I definitely would recommend um, Sean Strong also, our manage design right. star. One of the reasons why we chose him was because he's on Instagram all day long, sharing about his life, sharing about business, sharing about design. Like he's just, he's, he loves to share and, and, and help people and, and be part of the industry. So, um, so many out there. So definitely look for them and reach out because many of them will love to, um, just collaborate with you and, and talk with you and, and just teach you what they mm -hmm. know. They love it. I will give you a warning on Sean. Um, it's sort of like starting a Netflix binge um, where yes. uh, you, you will get sucked <laughs> in, whether it's vacuum cleaners or mice graveyards or, or whatever, um, you're gonna get sucked in on Sean. He's gonna have both the floral side and just basically you can cancel your Netflix subscription side. You've got, yes. you've got both sides with Sean. Yes, I'm pretty sure he knew we were going to pick him before we did because we were so obsessed. Anytime he'd go live, there, like, my whole team would like be like, okay, Sean's going live. We need to go see what he's doing now. So he is, he's very addicting. He has like that a personality. You're just attracted to him. I think we need to start like a new Sean streaming network and charge like seven bucks a month for it. <laughs> That's a good idea. I'm going to let him know. <laughs> Very cool. Um, before we move on to, let me go through. Um, Penny Stone, going back to hmm, checking the date, does that imply that you're really busy or exclusive? Brides love to save the date. Sure, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So the key thing that we had, uh, I, th I think what you're saying plays into it as well, Penny, um, and I'll, I'll answer the question, but the key thing that we found was that um, it does kind of have an implication of busy, but it's less, it's less about that. It's just super low touch. And when someone specifically is getting married, there's a good chance that they, they don't know the florist. This is one of the coolest parts about the floral industry is that they are open to coming to a new person. It's not like someone that they've been shopping with all their life. They're open to coming to somebody who does weddings and events and has a great eye for those. Um, and so, because of that, you want to take every opportunity to open what, what I like to call the top of funnel, which is just the very, very first time anyone's ever heard of you. And so this is a super non-committal way. You know, you aren't saying, hey, bring your bring your your fiance and your mother-in-law and let's all sit down. It's just saying, hey, let's just get your information real quick and see if we're busy. Um, one of the things too that we did while we we're at the wedding show, we'd say, yeah, we actually have just our office manager who's going to be just checking emails and following back up. 
we were the office manager. <laughs> and so in that, we're just a small company, but at the same time, we were, we were figuring out a way for them to say, oh, this sounds, you know, this is definitely something I at least, you know, I like your work, I'd at least like to check your day. Um, so it, it does kind of imply that the busy, um, I, I would say for us at least, it implied a little bit less exclusive, um, but it certainly does say, hey, we want to make sure that we're open on this date. We, we, we like to use the term exclusivity specifically in terms of weddings and events and say, hey, well, we focus on weddings and events. Um, obviously, if you're a you retail shop, if you've got both sides, you have to make sure you tread lightly and make sure you're saying this appropriately. But for us, for weddings and events only, we said, hey, we're exclusive to weddings and events. That's all we do. And we want to make sure that we give your uh, event the attention. So great question. We really focused more on the the, hey, we could be busy, um, but more on the, hey, it's it's a low touch way for you to give us your information and as to see whether or not we'd be a great fit. Great. Um, great we're gonna question, circle, Penny. Yeah, thanks, Penny. We're gonna circle back to where we were um, talking about continuous education. I know we talked about reaching out, yep. um, Insta leaders, that type of thing. What, what else do you recommend? Articles, blogs, there's, there's one of the super, the coolest things about the internet is this, there's the people that may have never been in the industry or engaged in the industry, they're able to share things. And then there are people that have been in the industry for years and years that are able to, to share things in a really free education way. Well, a few that I'd follow, like if you're not in like Flourish Society, uh, you know, Christina Berrigan, she's another one of the, the partners on the Curate Marketplace that is just, she's about giving and about yeah. educating. We've loved partnering with her. She's got, you know, Facebook group. She, she does a couple of events a year, a couple of webinar type events a year where she's just training and educating. So, you know, Christina is just an incredible person to be able to connect with. Flirty Flourish is another big one that we love connecting <laughs> with. That's a blog post. And she does like rose studies where she examines the rose and is able to really dig into, um, you know, what, what are the different uh, colors that that might be great that, you know, if you're looking at it, you know, multiple different colors for rose and how well does it survive? I was chatting with her at AIFD about this. And that's such a huge, huge thing that, that you can be able to educate yourself without having to actually sit down and watch a rose, you know, grow and die for a week. And so yeah. it saves some time for you as well. And, and then the Mayesh blog is a, is a big thing. Mayesh is continually, continually putting out good content. <laughs> These mornings with Mayesh are a great way to continually educate yourself, uh, and they're fun too. There's something that you can enjoy, sort of like you know, the streaming with Sean, but it's you know, and mornings with Mayesh instead. And so they're they're a way that you can be able to be engaged in the industry, be be continually pushing yourself to learn more. Um, but I would really write, those are a few of them. You know, Week Curate has a blog that that we love sharing our education going through the process of, right. of growing a company and, 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 and building from scratch all of these processes and procedures. So those are a few of the ones that I really would recommend. Um, and, and then on top of articles and blogs, even like resources and workshops, they, there are so many different great workshops out there um, that are available for florists to be able to actually get hands on with. Um, I, 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 I might be letting the cat out of the bag a little bit here, uh, but there might be an event with Curate coming up that we're going to be doing. I can't really say any, any details about it, uh, but it is something that we're super excited about because it's not necessarily about Curate. It's about the industry and about helping grow the industry. Um, but there's a ton of them out there and find one that, that aligns with where you're going. Again, go back to that first thing we said, what's your end goal? Are you trying to scale up huge? Well, you need to be focused on business floral conferences. Are you are you just wanting to be involved, hands on in the, in sort of the cutting edge design? Then you need to be finding these really hands on design classes that are going to push you a little bit harder. Like I know, is that the structure that the master class is set up for uh, uh, Mayesh? Yeah, it's a faster pace. We do centerpieces and bouquets and installations. I feel like installations is a big mystery for people who don't get to do it hands on or don't have right. that clientele yet. So it's a, just a great way to kind of get immersed in all the big pieces of event design. Um, and from, you know, Sean's perspective and kind of what he what he brings to the table and things that he's learned along the way and 
and mistakes and things like that. And what happens when your installation falls from the ceiling, you know? <laughs> <laughs> we may have had that happen before. Right, right. So those are really great things. So yeah, we love the master class. You know, and it's not for just master designers, it's just because there's just so much packed into the day right. and a half. So we it's um a little bit bigger scale than our, our all levels class. So it's really great. Um and then it's just a great way to like build up your portfolio too. If you again, you know, for those of you who are established, that's great. It could be a good way to refresh or do something more along the lines of a styled shoot, but you get the workshop experience. Um, right. so we provide all the professional photos. But for those of you who are just starting out and need to build, we get those kind of questions like, how do I get a portfolio? I, I don't have clients. Right. I don't know what to do. And I don't want to just spend money on flowers and not have any, you know, not right. have an event to take it to. So I think a workshop is, whether it's ours or someone else's, is a great way to do that because you, typically you're getting the professional photos of your work of the group work and so that way you can use those and um and and use that for instagram to kind of feed that that funnel and that's that one of the best about. things that that i've seen and i've been to several of the mayesh design star workshops it's one of the best things that i've seen there is if you're number one if you're new um you, you just anything that's taught is going to be growing and adding just leaps and bounds to you but if you're experienced you've got you know 25 other people other florists there and maybe you do pick up some stuff from the person leading the class but maybe there's somebody else there working on something beside you that does a trick that you're like hey wait, wait a second how how did you do that little piece right. of that, that mechanical trick there that um, I think provides a ton of value, just exposing yourself to so many different experienced people, um, especially with some of the structure that you all have set up. I think, I think that's a, a, a great, great method for that. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Love workshops um, and love everyone that you mentioned too. I know. So someone was bringing up uh Jody Duncan, she's mm -hmm. also a really great designer. She's past Mayish Design Star. Um, she's awesome. And Mandy Majerik's our first Mayish Design Star, and um, she just posted like this really cool technique of putting like a big giant tropical leaf in between like plexiglass and having mm -hmm. words on top of it. Just she's just you know like all these people. There's so many people just sharing out there that you just. You know, if you're craving that information and wanting to learn, it's all out there. You just got to be willing to kind of connect with those people and and, and do your thing. So it's sure. pretty cool. I, I love that about our industry. Um, Huntress Floral says, huge fan of continuous education. We're learning new things every day. Yep. Love it. Love it. Um, oh, I I like it. Okay, go ahead. I was gonna. This is from Sheila. <laughs> I always love little props for Maya. She said, "You guys rock." Yeah. I'm a new vendor with Mayish. I'm so impressed with everything you guys provide. You're not just a floral wholesaler. You guys are truly partners, and that's that's what I love. Love yeah. it. And I would echo that from from a Twisted Willow side. I mean, we've worked with different wholesalers, and just the it's really really seamless <laughs> working with. At Mayesh and, and having somebody that's like, hey, I don't have this, but I do have this. And they're, they're trying to work with you. We've had, you know, even in the, and I, even in the last couple of weeks, I'll just go ahead and leave it to that. Even in the last couple of weeks, we needed to grab something from a, a wholesaler and it just, they sent us back a sales order and it, it was just missing things, but we didn't catch it until like the stuff showed up and we're like, why didn't you, you know, let us know that you couldn't get these things? Right. And um, we've never had that experience with Mayash. And so I'll, I'll, I'll even give kudos from the Twisted Willow Design side where they're, they're very much informed and very much in the loop. And, and, and I really appreciate the, the legwork that they go to to be able to do that. And the, I mean, honestly, just the, the prices do not reflect the, the, the difference in prices do not reflect it. In fact, I think sometimes it's cheaper for us. Most of the time it's cheaper for us to actually order through Mayesh and get better service. So kudos to y'all. Thanks, Ryan. I didn't ask for that, but I'll take it. <laughs> you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> I, uh, I will no. say one more on the continuous education. If you are a curate mm -hmm. user, um, we did release the, the marketplace recently here. And the marketplace is basically, uh, there's some paid resources, most of it's free resources. So if you're a curate user, be sure to go to the marketplace because we've got you know almost, I think over a dozen education partners that are just putting up free content. I mean, this is huge, free downloadable contracts. Uh, there's some, th some um, a couple paid resources on there that are just really in-depth mechanics for 
particular types of uh, like hanging installations um, that give you the Amazon links and everything to be able to know exactly where to get the tools that you need for it. Um, but there's a ton of free stuff on there. You can just go and download that. So many of our partners have put up. I think Mayesh just put up. Uh, it, Mayesh is one of our, our partners on the on the marketplace, and they just put up a. There was it a rose guide that you all put up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Great free resource and, and a way to continue that education. So if you are a curate user, be, be sure to stop by and grab some of that, some of those resources. Yeah, I love the marketplace idea. I think that's so cool. So definitely, guys, check that out. Um, and yeah, we put our, our rose guide up there and see how it how it goes. So we're we're excited to help support that. Very cool. And how do you get to the? How can you explain how you get to the marketplace? Like sure. you need to curate person, right? Yeah, that's correct. So um, if you're a curate user, uh, then you can basically just log into the into the account and you have access to all of those uh, continuing education uh, resources. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So we have a, a lot of, uh, we, in the past, we just released it about a month ago. And so we've had a lot of new users who've been interested. You know, obviously they, they've been meaning to sign up, but it, they are just like, hey, this finally is, is you know, I, I want to get this resource enough that I'm willing to bite the bullet on it. Um, and so that's that's a cool thing. And we have a lot of the resources. I will echo this. There's a lot of the resources that are on the marketplace that we actually have available for free. So like and uh, we have a, a free wedding florist contract template. We've got a freelancer guide. Those are those are available through Curate for free, whether you're a user of Curate or not. I mean, we're all about helping the, the industry and, and really just giving whatever we've learned and sharing that out as well. So yeah. um, some of the stuff from there, if it's made by Curate, is available from through the Curate blog for free. Yeah, I love that. And, and that's why I love working with you guys, too, because you are such a huge proponent of education and just growing and helping our clients in the industry to be stronger and better. I love it. Sure. All right, so I'm excited about this next, the next section that we're moving on to. You know, Ryan, I know you put together a list of the top 19 softwares that you use. Um, so let's get started. And by the way, to everyone that is watching or listening, we will have all of these listed on the show notes on our blog. So don't worry about taking notes. We will take care of you, I promise. And also while we are going through the list, we want to hear what your favorite um, favorites are? What do you use? What helps you be uh, run your business better? What technology do you love? What app do you can you not live without? So make sure you start adding those to the comments below. And Ryan, you want to kick us off with your number your number one that we have listed here? Yeah, let's do it. So starting out, we 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 categorize them into different groups is is general business management tools. And obviously the first has to be like Pandora or Spotify. Right. You've got to have, you got to have your list. You got to have your torn wells on or your, uh, you know, whatever your favorite one. I find that there's like two different types of music. One that you're needing when you're designing the first version of the big bomb centerpiece. And then one that you need whenever you're like now kicking out the rest, you just copying what was on the first one like but that's just execute time i have the tiger type of uh, type of music yeah. um, my, my my list always consists of 90s hip-hop by the way if you don't very know nice. about me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it it's yep. a gangster's paradise right exactly and, and and the first of the month i always have a lot of things to do on the website and stuff so like my team will send me bone thugs and harmony it's yes. you know first of the month. So we, we jam to that too. It's fun. A, ver a very embarrassing admission here um, is uh, I actually use Amazon music for it, but I just, I have some Irish Celtic pub music and that's like, if I want to work, I just hit this and then I'm able to just work for forever. So that's kind of embarrassing, but every so often you, you, you know, uh, something will mess up with my headphones and everybody throughout the office will hear, you know, what it sounds like a river dance concert going on. I love it. So so fun. <laughs> All right. So, um, another one that you use, and I know we're running on time here for 19 of them, so I'm going to keep hammering through, is Google Drive. This is a huge one that you, we use, both for, for Curate, for Twisted Willow, and that's just to share files, have, have everybody on the same page. It does a really, really good job of being able to coordinate that. It looks like we have a guest over there, uh, Yvonne. Oh, there she goes. She's hiding. We do, um, yes. <laughs> I feel like this is that that reporter's moment the other day that on the on TV the, a couple months ago. It's summertime. I got my babies home. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 
So Google Drive is another big one that we use, um, and that's to keep all of our team on the same page. Um, you know, we we used to utilize a, a tool called Gravity Forms. If you're on WordPress, uh, that's that's basically a form tool. We actually still use that for our budget calculator on Twisted Willow Design site. So twistedwillow.co, and you can click on budget calculator if you'd like. Um, we still use that there just because it runs some heavier custom calculations. We used to use that for our inquiry forms as well. We actually use Curate Now for our inquiry forms on that. But uh, the, for our check my date, you know, or, or for some of our forms, we'll a lot of times utilize uh, gravity forms on that. Um, WordPress is another thing. You know, we utilize that to run our site. I know Squarespace, Wix, I've seen a lot of right. great sites that are pretty simple for you to build. Yeah, um, right. is it, Right now our website runs on WordPress and we're building a new website. We're moving over to open cart, but it doesn't cool. seem to have as many plugins and fun things that WordPress can do. Um, and I've built uh, websites on Squarespace too. It's very easy and they have beautiful layouts that you can start with. So, um, or you're not spending a ton of money trying to right. figure out uh, a good layout. So love that. Well, and one of those questions too goes back to that very first thing. What's your end goal? Where are you trying to grow to? And if in I really would recommend if you if you're okay staying a lifestyle business, you know I'm going to be between uh, annual revenue of a hundred to you know five hundred thousand dollars. It's super simple just to stay on something like a Squarespace. If you're wanting right. to eventually automate like the entirety of your you know. Uh, maybe you do collections or something like that. You might want to use something like WordPress and use uh, the like Woo, they call there's a tool called WooCommerce or yeah. use something like OpenCart. Those are things to keep in mind when you're if you're thinking about rebuilding. Uh, I know Bloom Nation does some some great websites as well. If you have a retail side in addition to that, yeah, all great stuff. Yep, uh, Google Forms is another thing that we use. A lot of times we use that internally, and like we can be able to send out, uh, you know, a survey to our team members and be able to find out what everybody wants to do. So that's another tool. Um, and then Curate Forms is another tool that we utilize. So that, those are some of the general business management. Very good, love it. And then let me jump down here. So for finances, um, so we use uh, Twisted Willow Design uses Wave. Uh, which is an accounting software. Um, it's a free accounting software. It's super cool. It's got a great receipts app. And that, there's a, a specific app for receipts. It's better than QuickBooks. It's better than any other app that we use. Curate, on the other hand, we use QuickBooks. Um, we used to use Wave. Again, we, we made the swap once we realized if we were going to scale to how we need it to, that we had to use uh, something that was more accepted in the industry. And then in a you know, higher level, really in-depth accountants could jump in and be able to dive into. So that was kind of a jump that we had to make. It was a, it was a little bit tough of a jump to make, a little bit midway mid, midstream here. Um, right. but, but for Twist Willow Design, Wave is absolutely perfect. Um, we use Stripe for receiving a lot of our payments and then our banking app. I mean, it didn't hit us till probably about seven months ago. We've been running our company for you know six years and we've had a banking app the whole time. It didn't hit us that we had like check deposits. And so we were receiving all these checks and we were having to figure out how we we're going to get a one year old and a three year old, you know, loaded up to go to the bank. And, right. it hit us. <laughs> and our bank doesn't, doesn't have a drive through in the area that we're at. We're in downtown St. Louis. And so it's like, it's a commitment. And um, we we're like, why not just put, you know, deposit these from our banking app? So that's that's a must have. Um, it's just get the check in, deposit it. If you're not getting it digitally, just get it deposited. Um, and then we use Curate as well. Twisted Willow Design does for all of our invoices and payments and proposals, getting those sent out. Yeah, so those are it. Um, marketing. Um, what? what um, let me ask you, you Yvonne, and I know you've already looked at the list. What? Are, what, what would you say are the top marketing uh, softwares? Uh, for me, yeah, right now, definitely like a platform is Instagram for sure. That's my number one go to. That's where we focus most of our attention on. Um, and then also HubSpot now we're using a lot of the calendar and, and scheduling and just being able to track what mm -hmm. is what like all of our blog posts and the content that we're creating. Um, so HubSpot is key, like key for us to so sure. those are both up there as like my my number ones right now. See, the thing with Instagram for us, for Twist Wool of Design is we, we utilize it. We've gotten a couple leads from it, but it really has been ancillary for us in, in that people will see our site or come, we drive leads through other locations right. and then people then go to our Instagram to ensure that we're, you know, we're legit. And right. so 
I know a lot of floors that they are killing it, Sean specifically, but they're just mm -hmm. killing it on Instagram and they're they're driving all, almost all their leads through Instagram. So there's right. a ton of opportunity there. I um, know. We know floors too that just have an Instagram account. They don't even have a website. Right. Not recommending doing that, but you know, that's that's where they kind of focus everything on and um and they're doing really well growing their business that way. Yeah, totally. Of yeah. uh, the knot as well, I, I personally recommend the knot. It's a little bit of an investment, but you know, we we definitely see the return on investment from the knot. We're able to uh, you get the right kind of clients that we need to. We've invested in a lot of different ones, um, but that's a big lead source for us. Um, we did we worked pretty heavily on our SEO. So if you search, uh, I, I think this is still the case. I haven't checked in the last couple months, but if you search uh, St. Louis Wedding Florist, Twist Willow Designs is going to come up on the front page. Let me go find out whether I'm I'm still telling the truth here. Uh, St. Louis wedding florist. Uh, so that was a big thing for us. That's a big lead driver is just being on that front page um, mm -hmm. of of the uh, website. Yeah, we're still on the front page according to my, my search here. Yeah, um, our our search results are organic search and just the the, tra the direct traffic to our website is a, a really? big yeah lead generator for us. Right. So that that's really important. Really, yeah. that's. That's why when I'm saying I'm not recommending you just have an Instagram page, I really do think that you need to have a website. So yep. um, is the thing with just going back to social media platforms, the thing about those platforms is that you don't own that. It's not yours. You're just kind of you have the space there and that's about it. You know, you have your name, but that could easily get go away. And by the way, um, there was a couple months ago where we were we were getting attacked pretty much. Oh, no. we, I got hacked and I was able to get my account back. Um, but um, there was a, a big Mayish rep who had her account hacked and I don't think she was able to get it back. I need to follow up with her, but it was, you know, a month and and everything was taken down. They like removed all the content. They re they changed the name of her of her page and everything. So it was ruined. So like if that happens to you, and that's all you have, then what? So that's a good lesson right there um, of being able to have content and things feeding into something that you own, like a website. Was that, that the one that I think that was when I Kelly emailed. Cole. Yes, I think I may have emailed you about that. Yeah. And I was like, hey, something doesn't smell right about this email uh, right here. Yeah, yeah, it, it was bad. It, it's yeah, bad. It, it happens. It happens. Yeah. yeah, so have that the the as much security as you can on your on your pages. I know it's a pain in the butt, but it's so important. And um, but for us, when ours got hacked, we didn't ever get an email notification. Somehow they were able to get in there and change all wow. of our information. We were just lucky um, that we were able to get it back. And by the way, if it happens to you, you got to fill out that that like kind of request support form immediately. And then you need to email them constantly. Um, right. Just be that squeaky wheel and um, hopefully you can get your account back. But it is, it's a little bit scary. Yeah, well, and that's <laughs> the thing. I mean, like if you, if you are, dependent on one platform like that yeah. can kill you for a while but just the process it's not it's not that instagram doesn't want to do the right thing it's just a it's they've got however many hundreds of millions of users and there is a process mm -hmm. in place yes so you're kind of at the whims of their mercy in terms yes. of getting Smart. stuff up and going yeah so that's why it's important to still be on facebook still right. you know if you're doing videos make sure you're uploading them to youtube still there that's very relevant and people spend a ton of time watching videos there yep. um and just using all the different platforms we've even you know tried to start posting a little bit more um, frequently on linkedin because it seems like linkedin's trying to make changes and we are b2b so sure. um, we're trying to be there um so just yeah paying attention to those kinds of things and trying to be everywhere that your clients can possibly be um repurposing your content and you know not posting everything all at the same time but just you know mm -hmm. um just making those rounds making right. sure yeah Okay, I'm done with my, my spiel. I'll, <laughs> I'll <it>. stop. <laughs> and well, I, no. I have more Insta I have an Instagram question for later too. We'll okay, do. cool. Well, I'll just hammer through these so we can have time for questions on them. Um, so yeah. the, the other ones that we use. So when booking clients, um, you know, we we a lot of times we'll use uh, all the time we'll use Curate now for 
being able to, to log those. Um, but if you are needing to get a contract booked or whatever, um, we have used DocuSign before. We've used HelloSign. Both those work. They, they do take a little bit longer if you're having to customize every form. So we actually, we still use HelloSign, but we actually only use that for internal documents, like for a freelancer agreement or for uh, an employee contract agreement or something like that. So we'll use, Hel we, we really like HelloSign in terms of a signature platform. It's cheap enough. It's got, I think you can sign up for a free version and get like three contracts. And we aren't, you know, at Twist Wheel of Design, we aren't hiring more than three employees in a month. And so that's just not happening. And so for us, that it, it, we're able to stay on that free tier for HelloSign. So that's, that's a great, great tool. Yeah. Um, Gmail, we, we actually, you know, even though we don't have a Gmail address, we actually use Google Apps for business, which allows us to have Gmail. And that's just made life easier. It's, it's a, you know, with Curate, it's getting a little more expensive than I kind of like because right. we keep growing <laughs> and we keep adding email addresses. And I'm like, mm, I don't like spending that much. But when it was just Twisted Wheel of Design, we had two email addresses, um, one for uh, my wife and then one for a general weddings email address. Um, and so we use those two email addresses on there. And that made life just so much easier. Another Here's another hack that's really good. Uh, Google Voice, if, if you... Uh, don't want your cell phone out or if maybe you don't have a, a storefront and you aren't wanting to call up Charter or whoever it is to actually get a physical landline, Google Voice has a, the ability to have a free account and you can be able to get your own phone number. And this is a huge deal because Rachel and I, we both had Arkansas phone numbers and but we're in okay. St. Louis. And that there was a there was a legitimate drop off of people who saw our number and wouldn't call it because we're not from the area. And that's one of the okay. unique things about the floral industry is it is very, very local. And it's cool that it's it's so local, but they're dialing up a photographer who's from you know seven cities away. They're they're looking at people very local. So we got a 314 number for the St. Louis area. So Google Voice is a great, great tool for being able to do that. Yeah, um, I love Google Voice. And just the voice over IP kind of phone number exactly. thing, you know. Yeah, I think that's great. Exactly. So streak snippets, uh, streak is like a CRM tool that actually works within Gmail that you can be able to have snippets and send the same thing over and over. Um, so that's a, a great tool. Pinterest as well, um, you know, is obviously a, a basic one, uh, but we typically use that, you know, like Curate has a, a drag and drop from Pinterest integration. So you can be able to pull directly from Pinterest and just drop it on because I'm sure that no one's ever had a picture from the underbelly of Pinterest show up mm -hmm. at their doorstep before. Never. No, yeah. I know you guys, all you guys watching have never had to deal with Pinterest ever uh, before. I like to, I like to call it the man chuppa. It's like somehow, <laughs> somehow someone combined a mandap and a chuppa and they said, hey, we're having a Jewish Indian wedding. So we're needing to create this. And it's like this huge dynamic thing that's plenty of flowers. And hopefully they have more, a little bit more than an intimate budget. But you're like, ah, well, let's see. Let's see if we can figure out how to price this thing out. I love it. <laughs> um, we use uh, Awesome Note, and I, I personally use Evernote. Those are big, uh, just general tools. Anytime I have a note, I think you mentioned this earlier, we're like, oh, I need to write this down, da da da, -da or, or somebody that's, uh, you know, was posting on Instagram, they're just trying to get it out. A lot of times right. I'll use those tools just to get it out. Um, and so those are a few of our tools that we have. I'd love to, you know, actually one more tool that's not on uh, any of the lists we've ever talked about. If you have a team of more than five people, if you have a team of more than five people, I really would recommend using Office Vibe. Um, that V I B E Office Vibe .com. They, it's a really cool tool, and we're using it for curate, and it's giving us a lot of guidance into how team members think and and what their opinion is on the company and decisions without them feeling you know pressured. And it's a really really cool tool. So if you're trying to lead and grow a scale up an organization, I'd really recommend that. So other than that, I'd love to see if there's any questions if we can answer. Yeah, let me let me go through. Um, while I'm looking for questions, someone says Curate is the best. <laughs> well, thank you, Anita. I love that. Um, someone's talking about their Spotify. They and all the different things that they use. So zero for accounting, later yep. social posts. Um, I so don't know how to later. pronounce that. To do task manager. Oh, oh, to cool. do. Get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, I obviously have never heard of that one. Um, Google photo app to back up photos. I love that I because I, I don't have, I'm one of the very few that does not have an iPhone. I still am with Android and I love my note and um, love my backup of my photos. And then mile IQ for tracking mileage for taxes. Yes, 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 yes. Mile yes. IQ is a very great good, tool. Gina. Yeah, very good. 
Um, let me see if uh, what else we have. Someone was asking, I do have questions about STEM counter from Emily. Um, she had a whole bunch. She wants to know, and, and we can hit them one by one, but sure. here, are the, here are all of them all at one time. She wants <laughs> to know, is it uh, online access through an app? Can you go in and work on quotes and proposals from your phone, iPad, and computer? Is it easy to export your proposals to email to send to clients? And what tutorials or coaching is there to learn the software? You want to hit those up see, sure, and while yeah. I go through more of the comments? I'll concatenate them while you're, while you're digging into the library of comments. Yeah. Um, it, it is a, it's a, what we call a web app. So it's accessible from phone, from iPad, from you know, the computer. It's, it's mobile friendly. So, you know, even if you're sending to a client and they're, um, able to, they're only, they only have a phone or, or, you know, it's 1 a.m. and they're finally getting to that contract. It's going to sort of reconfigure their proposal according to their size of device. So that's a, a key thing. You, you can access it from everywhere. I told, you know, some people based on it being in the cloud, they, you know, they can't really have a vacation free anymore. They got to take their computer with them now and be able to get work done. And then they turned back to me and said, what's a vacation? Um, so it's it's normal. Um, but yeah, so you can accept, access it from anywhere that you'd like. Um, obviously it's, you know, the bigger the screen, sometimes easier it is with some more complex proposals. Right. Um, but we, we do have the ability to generate to a PDF, but more importantly, where technology is going, we have the ability to email a customized private link to them that gives them a mobile friendly view of the proposal. So the difference between a PDF and, and uh, you know, PDFs are good, they have their purpose, but the, the key there is, and this is in general, whether you are, you know, whether you're a curate user, whether, whether you've never implemented a software, it's important to at least know these. Um, if you send a PDF, they can't click on the photo, they can't, it's, they can zoom in a little bit, but a lot of times that gets pixelated based off of the compression format of the, the PDF. Um, and so that's a big difference for us. We do have the PDF ability, but you have the ability actually just to send it out directly from a unique URL. And so even if, let's say they find, you know, I'm sure you've never had the 17 version bride ever, but in case you... <laughs> In case you run into her, but in case she leaves our shop and decides not to go with us and she goes over to your shop, um, sh the the link always points back to the most recent one. So it's not, there's no link back to the very first one where she can get confused about what you are pricing something out because you've updated it. So that's another core thing. Um, and I think there was one more question, training. So the, the training, and this is a big difference between Curate and STEM Counter. The big difference is just the number of team members we have. Back when it was just me on a couch trying to help yeah. everybody else, it's just a limited amount of time. But we actually have implemented a system for, for, for new uh, users of Curate that where we personally ha we have a person, a team member, a consultant that personally works with them through the onboarding process and make sure they get up and going. And that's been a big, big emphasis for us. And, and actually, that's one of the biggest reasons that we've grown for five to 16 employees because we knew we wanted to give our customers an experience. So I didn't mean to take too long there, but I'd love to answer any other questions that are that are popular. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I love the, the onboarding process because as you know, Working with new software, especially if it's complicated, you need you need that that. It's an investment. It's a, yeah. it's a time and money investment. So it's mm -hmm. not going. I I used to be like, oh, it's so easy, and then I realized, man, there's some people they they've been doing their way a long time, and they need time to work through this. So exactly um, any of these apps that we've talked about today, mm -hmm. it's going to be an investment taking your company to the next level. And so whether it's Curate or whether it's Google Docs, whatever it is, it's going to be an investment. And you just have to. It's a it's a process where you have to continually learn this stuff, and it's just it's it's the new reality. Yep, exactly. I do have a question. Um, they want to know, and I'm I'm really bad with names, so I'm sorry. Sure. <laughs> Can you pronounce that name by? Uh, that's Sahida, I think. There we go. See, I can't ever be that person that like at the airport <laughs> that says everyone's names. I can't do that. Yeah, okay. Right. Anyhow, do you suggest curate when you are starting your business as a floral designer? Yep, it's a great question. The only time that I really recommend that is if you've owned a business before. That's, that's really the only time I recommend it. If you've got a lot of industry experience, um, maybe if you have a lot of ton of industry experience as well. Uh, but you know, if you're just getting started, don't on, and this is, this sounds like this is the weirdest thing for me to say, you know, don't buy, buy our software. But, um, if you're just getting started, we follow that principle manual, do it manual, figure out the ins and the outs of this stuff. And it's going to be a headache and you're going to have to use your right brain and your left brain at the same time. It's going to be, 
it's going to be hard, but but you need to go through that experience of learning how to build this out using an Excel sheet. We've got a free downloadable Excel sheet um, on on Curate that we give a link to for for floral designers starting up. We really recommend once you know uh, our florists tell us that once they're hitting about twenty events a year, it's at that point that it becomes worth it to be able to get on a software. So if you're doing two or five, uh, you know if you've got experience a ton of experience in the industry. If you've got, if you've owned another business before, I would recommend it. Like to jump in, you can be able to take the bull by the horns and learn it. But otherwise, any saw, and I'm, I'm recommending this for anything. This is one of the core principles was do it manually first, then automate the process once you get it done manually. Great, 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 great. So we're gonna we're gonna end the show hitting up uh, the Instagram question. So it's from Tracy. She says, "I've grown my business with Facebook and I've had great success. Instagram is my question. I feel like I'm doing everything right, including using lots of relative hashtags on each post and liking, commenting on others that are not following me, but still do not seem to have very many followers. My question is, how do I get more followers? So I'm gonna take on this question, Tracy. And you know, I think we do all get obsessed about checking that number of how many followers we have. But truth be told, that number doesn't really matter. What matters is the amount of business that you're generating from Instagram or whatever social media platform. Because this goes with anything that you're doing outside, you know, for marketing. And so you know, you really want to use Instagram and those social platforms to drive business to your website. That's why I'm always a big proponent about websites. I think they're so important. I think sometimes we forget about them. They get outdated. They get old looking. We don't have the right information on there. Um, and, and real quick, while I'm thinking about websites, I've talked about this before. But if you go, if someone goes to your website and can't tell where you are at, right. that's a problem. I, that's like such a pet peeve for me. I get like very angry about it. So I, you know, if you are listening or watching or reading, please <laughs> go to your website and pretend that you don't know anything about you and your business or ask someone to go look at your website. And in, in the, the very first thing I feel like people want to know is, at, am I at the right place? And is right. this designer? Cause as you said, you guys are in a very, local type of business, you know? Um, and, and so if you, if people don't know where you're at, how are they even finding you? So that's my big thing right there. Um, website, got to have a good website. Um, and so now that we know what the focus needs to be on, and you, then you can start looking at how to increase your leads generated from Instagram. So I think that is the better focus when you're talking about social media, not the followers, but generating right. those leads. And so, you know, just looking at, for example, the insights um, uh, on Instagram, making sure obviously you have an Instagram business page first, which needs to be connected to a Facebook business page. Um, and then looking at the insights and just seeing um, what posts are receiving more engagement. If the engagement's low, then kind of doing, going back to what you said, Ryan, is, you know, looking at the like examples that are on Instagram of people who are killing it, um, have high engagement, looking at kind of what they're doing and, and kind of figuring out how you can work that into what you need to do. Um, also checking out Google analytics. I, that should be on, um, top app list as well. Mm -hmm. Some type of analytics platform to look at how your website is doing, to look at where your traffic is coming from. So that way you can see what Instagram is doing for you, what Facebook is doing for you and start tracking this and looking for ways to increase that number. Um, here at Mayish, we, um, always ask our incoming leads how they found us. You know, They might come to us from a certain way, but they hopefully will remember where they first saw us or sure. what sticks out to them of where, where they found us. Cause they might've seen us years ago. And as you said, Ryan, it's kind of a process, you know, our, especially with software and, and kind mm -hmm. of bigger purchase decisions and changing the way you're doing your business, which that's, that's us too, you know, we're going to be interrupting how they do their normal business if right. they want to start working with me, especially if it's shipping. Um, so just kind of paying attention to how they found us and asking them that just come out and ask them, put that 
as right. part of your forms, your your incoming, um, your intake form or whatever you're using is when people come to your website. And hopefully you have that. Hopefully right. it's not just a contact form. Um, contact form I think is okay, but if you're in the wedding and event type of business um, and, and they're kind of signing up or wanting more information, you know, just collecting as much, you know, you got to be careful with that initial intake, as Ryan mentioned, because you don't want to scare them off and ask like, right. yeah, act like you're asking for everything plus their baby. Um, and, but, you know, just kind of playing around with those things. Yep. And I would, um, one yeah, point on that, that I'd like to, to say, I think Yvonne hit the nail on the head here. You, a lot of times the quite, you know, you have a question is like, Hey, how do I use Instagram better? Um, and, and I think there are some great tools and I think that is the right question, but a lot of times the answer comes to, okay, but what, what's your end goal? Is, is your end goal to be able to have a lot of followers on Instagram? And that may, that may be it. If that's the end goal, then great. But if your end goal is to be able to really drive business, a lot of times you're going to find out you're getting business from a different place. And there's, this right. gets a little bit deeper than what we have time for, but I'll, I'll do it in, in 15 seconds. There's something called first touch attribution and there's something called last touch attribution mm -hmm. and curate. We actually use last touch attribution because there's so many people that have heard of us. We're, we're an industry name, but we're interested in what's the last thing that they heard about. But with Twist of Willow Design, we do first touch because most of the, most of our clients aren't coming in after having heard about us 17 times. They're right. hearing about us the very first time. And so we need first touch. The, what's the first thing that you heard about us? How did you can it come in contact with us? And then from that, let's start finding it out. And, and a lot of times you'll find out that where you're getting business from is maybe not Instagram. Maybe, maybe it is, but maybe you can grow a different area um, and make sure that you're planning out what, how many, how many sales do we need to do? What's my average sale uh, or what's my average uh, wedding? How many of those do I need to do a year? And then what, where do I put my efforts on it? So I, I think there's a, a great, a great answer uh, to, to that question. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, with social media, Instagram, any kind of platform like that, you know, just trying to make sure that you're posting relevant contact content, trying to be engaging, posting information and also using call to actions, not right. just throwing something out there and then hoping they're going to do something you need to, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, jab, like the jab, 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 and then uppercut yes. type of thing, yeah. you know, you, you want to throw information out there. You want to be engaging. You want to show off. You want to create your online portfolio. Cause that part is important too. People want to know that you're legit and that you have that style that they're looking for, but then you need to do, you got to ask for the sale once in a while. So are you asking for the sale? Uh, what are your CTAs or do you have downloads? What are people asking you all the time that you can create content for them to kind of drive them again to your website? Um, those types of things. And it's, speaking of Christina Barragon, she, her other business, Posh Peony, because she does the Fleur Society for you guys, but she also does the right. retail end of it with the weddings. Um, and so she has a whole bunch of resources through Fleur Society, and she shows you how she does it with the social media and the email templates and the website and all of that. So um, be sure you check that out because that part is really important. And I feel like people kind of forget about that part. You know, sure. they're posting beautiful pictures and that's all great, but you need to build your business. That's the point of doing this. Otherwise, why do it? Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then um, I, I have some other information on here, but you brought up hashtags. Um, Tracy, you brought up hashtags. And so just looking at the hashtags, I, I did visit your um, your page and we'll keep it anonymous because I don't want to just throw people out there. But it looked like you were kind of it was relevant hashtags to the picture. But for for florists, you need to also be really cognizant of those like smaller geo hashtags. So so that way, um, if like I'm, for example, in Cooper City, Florida, right? I'm in Fort Lauderdale, I'm in Miami, I'm in, those are like my areas that I would want to reach because those would be my service areas that I would go out to. So, you know, Miami weddings, Fort Lauderdale weddings, right. if I'm going really down to the smaller cities, the Cooper City weddings um, or bouquets or flowers or whatever it is. Um, but I'm sure there are other designers in your area that kind of are using those geo hashtags and those are super important. They're smaller, but they're going to attract people who want to hire you, not just random people across the country who are interested in wedding bouquets and doing initial research of, you know, inspiration and things like that. So. Yeah. 
I could talk on and on and on about Instagram. This could be a whole show and maybe we'll do that one day. Um, but you know, I hope that answers your questions, Tracy, and helps you out. And if so, or if not, just feel free to email me and I can add more questions to a new show. Um, I th that's all we have time for. We're like, you know, almost 10 minutes over. This is awesome. Guys, if you guys have more questions for Ryan, be sure to post some in the comments. I will yeah. pass it along to Ryan and his team. We can add them to the show notes. Uh, look for the replay in a day or two. Oh, it just always depends on what's going on. And uh, I'll get that up for you guys so that we you guys have this amazing list. And Ryan, do you want to leave on anything else? You want to? No, it's great. Yeah, it's great. I, I you know, I, I think I think the best way to do it is just to echo what Yvonne said through all this process. You, you've got to figure out from you know, marketing or any process, you got to figure out what's the end goal here. And if you already have enough weddings, sure, fo focus your Instagram on just putting up pretty pictures or whatever application that you're using. If you're already getting it, you don't you don't have to change anything. Um, you know, obviously you want to continue to grow because you never know when things are going to change. But again, I just echo what, what Yvonne said. You just, you have to look at what's, what's the end goal, where are you trying to go with any application, with any piece of software you're doing. And once you have that, the answer becomes so much simpler. It's, and it sounds so weird, but you know, if you don't know where, if you don't know where you're going, you'll, you'll, you'll never make it. Or, um, if you're, I can't remember, there's a Yogi Berra saying around that, you know, if you, uh, <laughs> If you're going to nowhere, if you don't know where you're going, you're, you're, you're never going to make it. So, um, yeah, it, it define that so crystal clear. This is where I'm going. And once you have that, pretty much all the other answers are going to come. Yeah, I love it. And I think that's a great way to wrap the show. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining yeah, me. Thanks for having me on here. I hope it yeah. helped. Guys, thank you for joining me and watching us and interacting with us. You guys make this show so special. Thank you so much. We will have a show in August. I don't have a date, so stay tuned for that. And again, thank you guys. Have a rocking day, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone.